This module describes balloon inflation problems. Leaking balloons and balloon fires. Balloon quality has improved greatly over the years, but even though pinhole leaks are rare, they still happen. During your balloon inflation, once the balloon surface becomes taut, you should stop the gas flow and check for leaks. Sometimes you can see a pinhole easily, but sometimes the easiest way to detect a leak is to listen for it. A leak typically makes a distinctive hissing noise. If you're not sure if you're hearing a leak, you can give the balloon nozzle a gentle tug down to the filler stand and let it go. The balloon will bounce up and down a couple of times and if there's a leak you'll hear If you find a leak, tie off the balloon with a quick knot. Take the balloon outside and tether it to a ramp or a railing. Leave it alone and let it deflate by itself. Once the balloon is deflated, discard it in the waste as normal. Balloon Fires This is obviously not a concern when using helium. A balloon fire has never happened on Sable Island. It has happened in St. John's, Newfoundland at a very small number of Arctic sites, although those events were many years ago. But when inflating with hydrogen under very dry conditions and or with rapid inflation, it's theoretically possible for a static charge to develop and ignite the gas in the balloon. On Sable Island it's usually humid so there's much less risk of static electricity. In the early 1980s, changes were made to both the electrolyzer design and to balloon inflation procedures to reduce the risk of static buildup. Balloon fires were always rare, but these changes mean they're now an extremely rare event. But rare or not, let's talk about them. First, about fire extinguishers. If your balloon suddenly bursts into flame, it's important to turn off the gas flow right away. If the rubber hasn't started burning, closing the inflation valve may be sufficient to turn off the fire immediately. But more importantly, if you use a fire extinguisher without turning off the gas flow first, the extinguisher is going to disperse the hydrogen, mix it with air, and make it explosive. Do not use an extinguisher on a gas fire. Turn off the gas first, then use the extinguisher on anything that's still burning. What does all this mean in real life? If you have a hydrogen fire and can't safely turn off the gas, just get out of the building and sound the alarm. If you can turn off the gas, but the fire has spread to other materials and you're not confident you can extinguish it safely, just get out of the building. If you can turn off the gas and can use an extinguisher, then stand at the doorway to the inflation room and use it from there. The extinguisher shoots far enough that you can cover the inflation table and much of the floor without actually entering the inflation room. Risking your life to try to save a building structure is just stupid. Don't do it. There are two categories of balloon fire. First, in the initial stages of inflation before the balloon has an appreciable volume of hydrogen and while most of the balloon is still laying on the table. Secondly, after the balloon has lifted off the table. In the initial stages of inflation, the weight of the balloon is still mostly resting on the inflation table. If a static fire starts, you may hear a pop or see a flash within the balloon. You might see a glow in the neck of the balloon, or the rubber might ignite without warning. What to do? Well, first turn off the gas flow. That alone may be sufficient to extinguish the fire if the rubber hasn't ignited. If the gas in the balloon burns, it will burn up quickly. If the hydrogen fire has ignited the rubber, if possible, use the fire extinguisher to put it out. After the balloon has lifted off the table, the weight of the balloon is not resting on the table. If the balloon ignites, the fire may melt the rubber neck, or the rubber can just rip once it's perforated, and the balloon can separate from the neck and take off for the ceiling. What to do? Turn off the gas flow. The balloon will rapidly rise to the ceiling and the hydrogen will rapidly burn off and ignite the rubber and the burning rubber will fall back onto the inflation table. If possible, use a fire extinguisher to put out the fire on the inflation table. This all sounds pretty scary, but remember, balloon fires are extremely rare and unlikely events. 
There has never been a balloon fire on Sable Island or virtually all uproar stations in Canada. Environment Canada stations inflate more than 24,000 balloons every year. In more than a million inflations overall there have been only a handful of fires and those occurred years ago with earlier designs of electrolyzers and a poorer understanding of the processes involved. In the handful of balloon fires that did occur, the ignition happened while gas was flowing during inflation. It didn't happen with the balloon sitting all tied up. It didn't happen when the technician was tying it off or releasing. If you show the proper precautions while inflating the balloon, it's almost certain you'll never see a balloon fire. Ensure the inflation stand and everything else is properly grounded. Inflate the balloon at the recommended rate to minimize static buildup and check for pinhole leaks in the balloon. Let's look closer at the worst case scenario. A balloon ignites after it's lifted off the table. Portland State University ignited a hydrogen filled balloon and here we'll look at their results. This is a KSAM style balloon once used on Sable and the semi-transparent top suggests this balloon has been overinflated given the size of balloon. From their data, this balloon was about 4.3 meters tall and 1.4 meters wide. This works out to about 2,000 grams of lift, or about twice what an Environment Canada balloon would have in it. The easel standing beside the balloon holds a dummy they created to try to evaluate the heat generated by the fire and to measure the size of any shock wave. Laying on the ground below the balloon is a canvas launch pad. Winds were about 9 or 10 knots and the distance to the surrounding trees is much larger than it looks. The balloon was tethered and to ignite the balloon they pulled on the string bringing the balloon down to the ground until it touched a burning magnesium flare. You can see the burning magnesium flare behind the balloon. They relied on the wind to blow the balloon against the flare. It took three attempts before the balloon ignited. Here's the instant before ignition. Ignition. Note the relatively bright flame as the gas in the neck ignites. Balloons often contain a small amount of talcum powder to prevent the rubber from sticking to itself and that may be igniting and adding color to the flame. The balloon has started to ascend quickly. Note that the initial bright flame at the neck is already reduced. Burning hydrogen is visibly spreading out around the base of the balloon. The burning hydrogen gas is still visible. The height of the balloon is now about where the top of the balloon used to be. Note that the burning hydrogen at ground level is already gone. The balloon has begun to turn over. You can see there's a bubble of burning gas around the balloon opening and underneath. The balloon is still turning. The balloon is almost upside down and is noticeably smaller. You can still make out the burning gas though. The balloon is smaller still. Almost all the hydrogen is now gone. The balloon is now just a deflated pile of rubber. But the rubber is now igniting. The flame is now brighter than the original burst of flame at the balloon neck. Black smoke is now being generated. Some burning embers, but the flame is much diminished. Let's review. The balloon rose to about 1.5 times the original height before the last of the gas burned away. At the test dummy on the easel, the researchers reported there was not much of a shock wave at all. The heat did not affect the test dummy at ground zero. The researchers also reported that the balloon came down in one piece and the burning rubber burned a hole in their canvas launch pad. Now we'll step through it again, one frame at a time. Note that this is pretty misleading as it is effectively showing what happens in slow motion. In the actual event, the gas was all burned off within a second, so it's very quick.
Now let's watch it closer to real time. So what lessons can we take from all of this? When you're inflating balloons with hydrogen, stand beside the inflation valve whenever there's gas flowing, just in case something goes wrong. Pay attention to the inflation process. Don't do other things while gas is flowing. Turn off the gas at the first sign of something that looks different or wrong. A pop noise or a faint glow or a different look to the balloon might all be signs of a static buildup. After you've turned off the gas, wait a few seconds before investigating further. If a balloon ignites, it happens quickly and possibly with no warning. If the balloon separates and takes off, it will burn off quickly and the larger hazard may be the flaming debris coming back down. Don't use a fire extinguisher on a gas fire. Turn off the gas first, then if possible, use the extinguisher to put out any remaining fire. Use the extinguisher from the doorway to the inflation room. Don't go inside the room until any remaining burning debris is under control. This is the end of Balloon Problems module.